okay students so let us solve the next question <clears throat> so find the last digit of 3 power 1963 right so we have to multiply 3 1963 times and we have to find the last digit of that right so that is very hot trip here so we are we can make use of the Euler's theorem here so look at this Euler's theorem so if uh, a and n are relatively prime means if the GCV of a and n equals to 1 then we can have from Euler's theorem a power phi of n congruence to 1 modulo n where what is phi of n so phi of n is the Euler phi function so phi of n means the number of positive integers less than n and relatively prime to n right so this is the canonical representation of n so here p1 p2 pn are the prime numbers right so then the euler phi function phi of n will be so phi of p1 power a1 into phi of p2 power a2 and so on into phi of pn power an and pi of p1 power a1 will be p1 power a1 into 1 minus 1 by p1 so this is the formula right so and of course if p is a prime number then phi of p will be p minus 1 okay fine so here uh, we can we can consider uh, we can we here we need to find what so we have to find the last digit of uh, this means uh, we have to find x such that 3 power 1963 it's congruence to x modulo 10 so first uh, here uh, we have to come we, uh, we have to consider the gcd of 3 and 10 so the gcd of 3 and 10 is 1 so you can calculate the gcd here if you divide 10 by 3 you will get what 3 3 is a 9 so the remainder is 1 and if you divide uh, 3 by 1 you will get the remainder 0 and the gcd of 3 and 10 will be what it is the last non-zero remainder left on the successive divisions of these two numbers so one is the last non-zero remainder so the gcd is one so as the gcd is one by euler's theorem we can write 3 power phi of 10 is congruence to 1 modulo 10 right so but what is phi of 10 so we have to write 10 in the canonical representation here right look here we have to write this 10 in the canonical representation so what happens so we can write this 10 as 2 into 5 so 2 power 1 into 5 power 1 and phi of 10 will be phi of 2 into phi of 5 here 2 and 5 are the prime numbers so phi of 2 will be 1 and phi of 5 will be 4 as we know that phi of p equals to p minus 1 whenever p is a prime number right the phi of 10, 10 equals to 4 so here uh, we have to substitute the value of uh, phi of uh, 10 here so it is which is 4 and later uh, 3 power 4 congruence to 1 modulo 10 and here we need to calculate the 3 power 1963 okay 3 power 1963 is what congruence to uh, uh, under modulo 10 okay so we, we have to raise the powers 490 on both sides okay so uh, here what happens so if you if you raise the powers 490 on both sides so 4 into 490 will be 1960 and 1 power 490 will be 1 itself right so 3 power 1960 is congruence to 1 modulo 10 but we need to calculate 3 power 1963 modulo what right so let us multiply 3 power 3 on both side okay so we have 3 power 3 is what uh, 1960 into 3 power 3 what is that 1963 3 power 1963 and 3 cube is 27 right under modulo 10 always remember to calculate uh, here 27 is there so 27 is congruence to what under modulo 10 means you have to divide 27 by 10 so it will be what uh, uh, we can write this what uh, 2 point something right so uh, multiply 2 to 10 so 10 to the 20 so the remaining will be the remainder will be what 7 okay so therefore the last last digit of this 3 power 1963 will be 7 look at the next question we compute the gcd of 486 with the 434 and express as a linear combination of 486 and 434 okay so we have to calculate the gcd of these two means we have to perform the successive divisions of these two numbers and uh, the last non-zero remainder will be the gcd okay so look here so let us consider 486 and let us divide that by 434 okay so 434 ones are 434 okay so the remainder will be 52 and let us divide this 434 again let us divide this 434 uh, by 52 
so 52 eights are 416 the remainder will be 18 and again let us divide this 52 by 18 okay so 82 to the 36 the remainder will be 16 let us divide divide the 18 by 16 16 ones are 16 the remainder will be 2 and let us divide 16 by 2 so the remainder will be 0 so the last non zero remainder will be 2 so the gcd of 434 and 486 is Okay, now we have to express the GCD uh, as the linear combination of 486 and 434, right? So for that we can make use of this. So here A is the divisor, N is the dividend, Q is the quotient and R is the remainder. So if you have this, the what is the equation? So uh, dividend is equal to uh, divisor into quotient plus the remainder. So what is the remainder here? It is N minus A into Q. So you can, we can make use of this, okay? So look at the first division here. So here, uh, uh, here uh, 486 is the variant, 434 is A and 1 is Q and 52 is R. So what happens? So R equals to N minus AQ. So 52 equals to 486 minus 434 into 1. So let us call that as equation 1. Later, look at the second successive division. So 18 is the remainder, 52 is the divisor, 434 is the divided and Q is the quotient. What happens here? So 18 equals to 434 minus 52 into 8 so let us call that as the second equation right so again like next so let us look at this division so here the divisor is 18 and dividend is 52 the quotient is 2 and the remainder is 16 so 16 is equal to 52 minus 18 into 2 let us call it as equation 3 and look at the last non-zero remainder here so 18 is equal to 16 uh, uh, okay, okay sorry sorry 2 is equal to 18 minus 16 into 1 so that is the equation 4 and uh, here we have to consider the last equation and uh, from equation 1 2 3 we know the value of 18 okay and we know the value of 16 so let us do the substitution here so let us consider the equation 4 okay so let me consider the equation 4 here and now let us substitute the values of 18 and 16 from equation 2 and 3 okay we have substituted this and here we have to multiply 1 to 1 throughout okay so what happens let us simplify this 2 equals to 434 minus 52 into 8 minus 52 uh, into 1 that is 52 minus into minus plus 18 into 2 18 into 2 into 1 which is 8 into 2 later so this can be written as what so 434 minus 52 into 9 because look at the coefficients of 52 here if i take minus common so 8 and 1 is left okay so 8 plus 1 will be 9 so 52 into 9 plus 18 into 2 and uh, from the equation 1 from the equation 2 so we can substitute the value of 18 here okay so we have 18 so let us substitute the value of 18 and 52 from equation 1 and 2 so what happens so it is we have we got this okay so later on simplification later on simplification so we can have uh, 2 is equal to so 434 into 28 plus 430 486 into minus 25 okay the thing is you have to substitute the values of 18 52 and uh, 16 okay uh, and uh, later you have to do the simplification so finally you will get uh, the linear combination of two uh, uh, the linear combination of uh, 434 and 486 okay thank you so look at the next question so solve the system of uh, congruence equations Okay, so x congruence to 2 modulo 3, x congruence to 3 modulo 5 and x congruence to 2 modulo 7 using Chinese remainder theorem. The very first thing is we have to write the general form of the uh, simultaneous congruence equations. So that is x congruence to a1 modulo m1, x congruence to a2 modulo m2 and x congruence to a3 modulo m3. So here we have to, uh, uh, by comparison, we can have the values of a1, a2, a3 and uh, m1, m2, m3. Okay, so this is M1, this is M2, this is M3. Okay, fine. So after finding these values, so we have to calculate capital M. So what is that? It is M1 into M2 into M3, which is 105. And let us calculate M1, capital M1, that is M capital M by small m1. So which is what? We can cancel M1 here. So left is M2 is M2 into M3. So that is 35. And similarly, we have to calculate I capital M2, so capital M by M2, which is 21, and capital M3, so capital M by M3, which is 15. And after finding this, we have to calculate M1 inverse, M2 inverse, M3 inverse using this equation. 
see m1 into m1 inverse will congruence to one modulo small m1 okay so here so okay, capital m1 will be what 35 35 into m1 inverse congruence to one modulo 3 so we have to start the value of m1 inverse by 1 okay so 35 into 1 so which is 35 35 minus 1 34 is that divisible by 3 no so m1 inverse is not equal to 1 let us substitute m1 inverse equal to 2 so 35 into 2 70 70 minus 1 69 and 69 is clearly divisible by 3 so we can uh, we can say that m2 m1 inverse will be plus 2 right similarly to calculate m2 inverse we have to calculate we have to consider m2 into m2 inverse is congruence to 1 modulo m2 okay so later here uh, let us substitute the value of m2 here so which is uh, 21 into m2 inverse congruence to 1 modulo 5 okay so later uh, 21 we have to start the value of m2 inverse from 1 so 21 into 1 21 21 minus 1 20 20 is divisible by 4 so m m2 inverse will be 1 and to calculate m3 inverse we have to consider this equation m3 into m3 inverse congruence to 1 modulo 3 okay so let us again consider the value of m3 inverse from 1 so yeah here m3 is 15 okay so 15 into 1 15 15 minus 1 14 14 is clearly divisible by 7 so m3 inverse will be 1 so finally the solution by the chinese remainder theorem the solution of the uh, given system will be uh, x congruence to a1 into m1 into m1 inverse plus a2 into m2 into m2 inverse plus a3 into m3 into m3 inverse modulo m so let us substitute these values here we will get uh, x, x congruence to 233 modulo 105 right so here we have to uh, we have to consider 105 right if you, if i add 105 to 105 i will get the 210 okay so 233 minus 210 will be 23 so x congruence to 23 modulo 105 so if you divide this 233 by 105 the remainder will be 23 okay so that's why x congruence to 23 modulo 105 is the required solution